Thank you so much. I am so glad to be here. We were going to do PowerPoint, a little PowerPoint, and I am not a huge fan of PowerPoints. Turn down the lights, turn up, and let make you read. It's never been a um, something I like doing. I need to engage with you, and I need you to watch me. Now, you're all aware of your goals or your, what is the we become? Is it your, your goals, your, your theme? Thank you. And oh, look, I found it. <laughs> what I want you to do is watch me most of all. My body language, how I stand, how I look at you. I'm the PowerPoint, okay? We become how to discover our potential, how to decide what you want to become, how to become what you have decided to become. We constantly battle mediocrity, inspire innovation, and expand our potential. We passionately work to become the leaders this, that this world needs. Those are tremendous goals, and I applaud you for them. I want to go over a few traits of leadership and then compare them with traits of professionals. Traits of excellent leaders, ambition, patience, humility, humor, not only the ability to find humor in life, but find humor in yourself. The ability to be able to laugh at yourself. Vision. Everyone has a vision. And what does that look like? What does that look like to a leader? If I could mention one leader that had probably the most phenomenal vision of anyone I've ever read about <clears throat> or watched, it's Steve Jobs. If you haven't read the biography, of Steve Jobs, it's worth reading because it's not only a biography about Steve, it's a biography about how he changed technology. That's the value of the book, how he really changed technology. Our empathy, empathy with other people, situations, animals, continual complete empathy. Compliance. Compliance and ethics I like to use interchangeably. We know the rules, we know what the rules are, we know the rules apply to everyone, and we succeed by following the rules. We're tolerant, we're tolerant of other people. We're tolerant of some people lack knowledge that we have, they lack a skill that we have, they lack experience, and we're tolerant of that and helpful and mentoring. We have courage. We have courage to get up every day in the morning. We have courage to embrace what's new, what's frightening, what's unknown, and we have the courage to go out and change the world. First by changing ourselves, then by changing where we are, then by expanding that. We're accountable. I'm accountable to you to give you valuable pieces of information to leave here with. I'm accountable to you to give you food for thought that next week you go, oh, okay, I got it. Now I've got it. So that I give you information to feed you for a long time. That's what I want to do today. Appreciation and gratitude. I think appreciation of where we are, the quality of life we have, the people we are, the opportunities we have, and gratitude for that is extremely important. What we're going to talk about today is etiquette. And I would like just one person to say to me, tell me, when you heard we were going to talk about etiquette, what was the first thought in your mind? Eating. Eating, okay. We're not going to do a lot of dining etiquette today, but I will be back. Linda and I have talked about me coming back for a dining etiquette course, <clears throat> which is fun. It's really fun, especially if we set up tables and you're actually eating. But dining is very intricate. It's, it's important. You reveal yourself quickly during dining, especially if you're being interviewed. Then people, then you're, you either have it or you don't. Okay, what else? One more from a lady. Oh, no. <laughs> Manners. Manners. Well, okay, let's go. One, let me talk about orchestrating your success first. What I want you to think about today is your personal and your public life that will change into your business life. 
your student business life and how they need to be working in harmony. Just like an orchestra, every part of an orchestra needs to work in harmony in order to complete and present something that people love. You can't have discord in your personal life and have harmony in your student or work life. You have to have a continual pattern that you follow. You can't be mean one, way, one place and kind the next. You have to be consistent. Consistent is the key we're going to talk about today. My contact information is ellen at impactfactoryutah.com. George has this. <clears throat> My number is 801-581-0369. You may call me, email me with any questions you have. I'm here to answer them for you, to help you. I'm a great researcher. I research all the time and I love it. So let me be a resource to you. Okay, let me get back to being organized. Then we're going to talk about personal, professional traits. Professional traits are consistency in everything you do. Your people watch to see if you're consistent. If you're consistent, they know they can rely on you and trust you. What is the best quality to develop between you and someone else? Trust. Trust, Trust is really important. It gives you the foundation for moving forward. Gracious. True professionals are always gracious. We always know what we're doing, we're always at ease, and we always present a gracious, calm exterior. We're on time. We're never late. If anything, we're early. We're not a lot early, we're like three or four minutes, but we never make people wait for us. We're quiet. This is an interesting one because it surprises many people when I say this. You don't hear professional people. They don't walk around with keys jangling off their, their pants or off their purse. They don't walk around doing things that mean nothing. When they are in your presence and when they walk around a corner and they're in front of you and speak, that's when you hear a professional also goes for body language, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Professionals respect everyone, they're never condescending, and most important, they're present in the moment. They have your undivided attention. When you come up to them and you talk to them, they stop, they look at you, and they hear and comprehend what you're saying. So many times we listen to people with the thought, that, oh, I wish they would hurry up so I can respond back. Communication, good communication, is only communication when you understand as the receiver what I have said as the speaker. That's communication. For me to be as eloquent as I can be and talk for 20 minutes doesn't mean I've communicated anything. It's only when I've said it so you can understand it and you know what I've said. They wear the right uniform to play the game. Now this is very, very important. Today, all of you have worn the right uniform to play the game. You came in here, you're serious. You're intent on being professionals. You're intent on being professional today and tomorrow and 20 years from now. And you're laying the foundation. That's important, you've worn the right uniform. When you go out to play soccer or baseball or basketball, you wear a uniform to play the game you're playing. It's the same way in the business world, in the professional world. When we go to church, we wear a certain uniform. When we go to work, we wear a certain uniform. Make sure you know what uniform needs to be worn for you to be successful. The term dress for success still applies. We dress for what we want. We make it a very concerted effort to say, I'm dressing because I want to succeed and be very cautious about it. Now I want you to think about the next few things we talk about. 
I want you to consider them soft tools, soft skills. And I want you to think about having a toolbox in front of you. It can be any size, any color, any shape, and this is your toolbox. I want you to open up the lid, and as I speak about each tool, I want you to understand it and put it in your toolbox. So by the time we're through, you have a professional toolbox filled with soft skill tools. And when you get up tomorrow, the next day, the next day, you'll open up your toolbox and you'll say to yourself, okay, what tools do I need to be successful today? And to pick out the tools you need. Be very conscious of, I need this tool, this tool, this tool, because this is where I want to end up today. Professionals know their journey, they know where they are on their journey and where they need to go. Life is an adventure and they're in charge. So where am I today, where am I next week, and where am I going to go? I'm just going to talk about first impressions. Everything we do creates a first impression. Our voicemail message, our voicemail greeting, the ring on our phone. If you're sitting here right now and one of your phones rang, we would know who you are because your phone, the ringing you've picked for your phone is a representation of who you are. First impressions in person are created in three to seven seconds and you can't undo that first impression. There's no second chance to make a first impression. I walk in front of you, you look at me and in three to seven seconds I've made a first impression and you have decided seven very specific things about me, as I have you. How old I am? How educated I am? Can I be trusted? Am I ethical? Am I moral? Do you want to get to know me? Am I likable? Do I make you feel comfortable in my presence? Do I, am I relaxed? Do I make you relaxed? Do you want to get to know me more? Those are the three to seven. Tell you why we don't think about that consciously. If you think about a four-year-old child at a party with mostly adults, the child loses its parents, and you walk up to that child and stand in front of it and get this close, the child in three to seven seconds, and you've seen this, will decide if they're safe or not. If they're not, they start screaming for their parents. So we have done this naturally all of our lives. In three to seven seconds, we decide if we like someone. And that's really important. Now what we look at is we look at grooming, dress, posture, gestures. All of that is wrapped up. So it, we go from head to toe, back again, and then back to shoes. Shoes are probably one of the most important things you will wear, and most, all of you, have got, have on nicely polished shoes. That's really important. Also, it's important to have the bottom of your shoe acceptable for when you sit down and cross your legs and the bottom of your shoe comes up. It should be as, in as good condition as the top of your shoe. Because what you're telling people is, I, I, I pay attention to details. I'm a detail-oriented person. And that's important in all industries to let people know I pay attention to details. Let's talk about gestures first. Gestures are very important in that they tell people, again, who you are, but they're also connecting points. As I go through this, sorry I don't have this attached to me, <laughs> so I apologize. As we go through um, looking at gestures, make sure you understand the importance of gestures and how we can disconnect people because our gestures have nothing to do with what we're saying and we can do a lot of it. You see people walking down the street on the cell phone and they have got gestures going all over the place. They mean nothing to anybody. You want your gestures to mean something. You want them to accent, accent what you say. Also, the most important thing is posture. 
<clears throat> you have to have good posture because you look in charge, you look healthy, you look like you're ready, and you're confident. The other thing about posture is it gives your body an openness. Can you all hear me right now? Okay. If your body is open, your, gest your posture is strong and straight, and your body is open and you're relaxed, your hands are relaxed to your side, I am going to communicate with you heart to heart, soul to soul. I don't have my arms locked in front of me. I'm open, I'm relaxed, my hands are to the side, and I'm communicating with you. That's very important. Open hand, open chest, and we're communicating with each other. If you clench your fists, if you point at people, if you have angry gestures, you're eliminating that person from connecting with you. So you want to be careful that you're using open gestures and you're using them below your shoulders. You have to be below your shoulders. You don't want gestures like this. You want gestures like this. Also, you want to make sure that you're not, like I say, covering yourself. If I sit down here, can you see me? Do you want me to sit up on the table? <laughs> that should be easy. Okay, so if I sit down in front of you and I cross my legs and I cross my arms and I bend back, I've completely withdrawn from you. And you don't want me to do that. You want me to be open and look at you and engage with you. So be careful what you do with your body. And we have heard this forever. You cross your arms, you're telling me you're not engaged. That you don't care what I'm saying <clears throat> and we're not communicating. So you wanna make sure that you're not doing that with people. Even though that's a comfortable for everyone, you wanna make sure you're not doing that. Crossing any, any part of your body or withdrawing or condensing is not good because you're in charge. It's important that you're in charge and you look like it and that you're equal with the person that you're communicating with. Would you come up for a minute? Absolutely. My star. <laughs> Tell me your name. Dan. Dan? Luke. Luke. When you shake hands, that's an important connection. Remember, we're connecting with people. And we're going to face each other. We're going to do web to web. No <laughs> limp handshakes. Limp handshakes tells, tell people we're not confident, and we are. We all want to, want to do web to web and a good, strong handshake. Now, as we shake hands, the natural flow of the eye goes up the arm here and then to the eye. So my flow is up to here. This is where you wear your, wear your name badge. It's right there, and that's why because you're looking up the arm to the name and then to the person's face and you're connecting. And you spend quality time, not a minute, but you spend three or four seconds connecting with that person. That's quality connection. And it's also important when you introduce yourself to anyone, voicemail, in person, you leave a message, you say your first and last name. Thank you. To go, hi, this is Susie. Doesn't cut it. Because you're, you have to be a person. You have to be a person of worth. You have to be proud of yourself. And you need a first and last name. OK? Questions? You have no questions. Well, Comments? Yes? Because it's kind of hard because, yes, you want to we want to be professional, it's kind of like why we're here and everything, but then like how, I don't know, I just, when I'm meeting a friend or something, I'm like, oh, what up, my name's George. You know, I don't, hello, my name is George, man. <laughs> I, so like, what, what, where do I balance that in my personal life? Like how? If you walked into a, a classroom and you were just saying, hi, my name is George, but eventually you're going to get to your last name. So why not say it at first? I mean, it's really, it's simple. We all like to be casual, but we still need to let people know who we are. 
Hi, my name's Ellen Reddick. How are you? We still want a first and last name. Sure. So it's, it's, but as you get into different circumstances, you can, you can add to that more information to make it more formal. Hi, my name is Ellen Reddick. I, this is who I am. To make people feel like you give them something to talk about, but you also want to, want to ask them, what do you do? Now, are you going to school full time? Um, where do you work? Uh -huh. Oh, just to respond to his comment, um, in social situations, it's been a lot easier for me to state my first name and then repeat my full name. Hi, my name is Heather, Heather Maddox. That's been able to tone down the formality while still providing mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Back, can you come back again? <clears throat> yes. <laughs> I thought you were calling on someone else for a comment. No, should we do that? Okay, web to web. Now, when you shake someone's hand, let's talk about that for a minute. You want to make sure you shake someone's hand like this, like this, not like this. This is the <laughs> pastor hand, and we don't want that. Or the old man that tries to We don't to want you this, down. yeah. We don't want this either, or this, or this. That denotes ownership, and you don't want people to own you. So you want to back away if someone decides they're going to go, hi there. <laughs> So be careful how people treat you and make sure that you're always eye to eye with whoever you're meeting with. If you meet with someone that is sitting down, you sit down next to them. If someone stands up or walks toward you, will you stay there? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now you walk toward me. Okay, I'm going to immediately, man or woman, I'm going to immediately stand up and put my hand out. One, because I don't want to be hugged. <laughs> I mean, you have to, if you're in a business situation, you have to establish your boundaries. And it's very possible as a woman, I get a lot of hugs. That's not where I'm going. So I need to establish that I'm in charge too. You always want to be eye to eye with someone so that you're connecting with their eyes and we're equal. We are equal. And that's what I want you to think about. I'm equal to this person. I'm not better but we're equal, okay? All the little things. It's the, it's the mental image we create in people's minds that carries us to the next step. If we leave a good mental image of, okay, I feel comfortable in that person's presence, they seem in charge, they seem to know what they're doing, they're not pushy, but they're in charge, then people are more comfortable around you. Would you stand up? Please, thank you. I have a question about the like, approaching, like, um, a standing up thing. So what happens if you're, like, behind the front desk? Because well, all of us, um, we work behind the front desk sometimes. Is that appropriate if somebody approaches us that we don't want to stand up and, like, introduce ourselves? Tell me more. So... Are you at a bank? Are you at a hotel? Oh, you're behind a secretary's desk? Okay. If, what, you don't really ever want anything between you and someone else if you want to connect with them. If, how many, is it one person at a time? Is it 50? Okay. I would always stand up, come out from behind your desk, not continue in front of the desk, behind it, I mean, and present yourself. Here I am. This is who I am. Again, you're taking charge because you are the host. They're your guests, right? And people look to you. The host is who you follow. The host tells you what's going on, what's happening, what, and they'll tell you. And they're your guests, so they'll follow you. And that's what their expectation is. Come here, let me, come here, let's do it. <laughs> now this is something that's really important that we miss as we, as we go through and we get to a certain point in our life and probably in our late 20s. But when we talk about personal space. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. That's what you had in mind, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. When we talk about personal space, that's really important. This is personal space. I don't belong anywhere in there 
unless she takes my hand and pulls me into her personal space. Otherwise, we are that far apart at all times. And then as we get to know each other, then we can relax and get a little bit, but you have to give people the personal space. You'll see this in grocery stores, people picking up luggage at airports, people just getting too close to people or standing behind them. People don't like that. That's really offensive and that all the hair on the back of your neck goes straight up. Yeah. So you have to be aware of people's personal space. And it's different per country. Yeah. So if you're dealing with a certain country, then let's talk and we'll, go, we'll talk right. about how much space is personal because some countries don't have personal space, yeah. but Americans do, and it's really important to them. Thank you. Thanks. Uh huh. So I have a question about that. Actually, when you um, we're talking about having people like touch you and take ownership of you, like touching your hand or touching your <coughs> how do you stop people from doing that? How do you stop people from taking ownership of you? Is it cer the certain people all the time? Is it someone you see consistently? Just like. <laughs> yes, he's, he's in here no, I just people in general, just people trying to take ownership of you. I feel like it happens quite frequently when people are when I meet people for the first time. They either want to hug me or they want to like pull me in close or they want to do something. It's hard. It's hard and it's challenging for women. So and, and it, again, posture. You plant your feet 12 inches apart and you square your, your shoulders back, and you look like formidable. And then as someone comes near you, again, you put your hand out. You don't allow them f closer than this. And that's hard to do. But after you do it a while, it will help. And you may just have to actually disengage from someone and keep your hand out. It's, it's challenging to do that. Mm -hmm. like, if they put it on top of your hand when you're shaking people's hands, they're then they're trying to nominate you. Yeah, they try to dominate you. So if you look at me and McKenna's handshake, right now it's like equal, but if somebody comes in and puts your hand down, they want to take control over you because they're easier to move. But if you, and then sometimes they'll put it on the bottom so you have control of them, but you want to make sure that your hand is even with the other person's hand. That way you're both in control, and that way you're That way you're both equal. Yeah. You're not both in control, but you're both respecting each other equally. So that's good, that's an excellent point because that's true, many people will come and tip your hat, your hand down. So you wanna make sure that you're um, putting that upright. Now, any more questions, comments? Uh-huh. When you're sitting next to someone? No, when you're sitting like this, person, you're, you're going for an interview, and person, you're far out of the media, and looking tired, just talk to you. How close you sit or far away from them? And are they behind a desk? Sometimes behind a desk, other times like, like fast food restaurants, okay, they're on a the table. Okay, okay, then you would sit on the opposite them? Sit on the opposite them. Uh -huh. How close do you lean towards them on the house? Half, only to the middle of the table? Uh -huh. But you also, you want to keep your posture when you sit as good as when you stand. Okay. So you want, you want to make sure you have control of it, you look in charge, that you're not collapsed. And it's important that we use your space, the space that you have. So you want to have this much space. You want to sit down at a table. If they're behind a desk, they really shouldn't be. They should take you over to another table where you're both equal. But if they're going to stay behind a desk, then I would be far enough away. Say this is the desk. I would be far enough away that it was really easy for you to look them straight in the eye. Okay? Distracting behaviors. Let's do distracting behaviors for just a minute. This is important, especially for women. Distracting behaviors. You don't want to distract someone from your message. I have a message to deliver to you. I want you to like me and I want your business, but I don't want to distract you from the message I've, I've brought. And I can do, I can distract you in several ways. 
I can distract you by it wearing inappropriate clothing where it's too low and too short and I come in and what you're looking at is my right thigh not my message so you have to dress and able you have to dress to be able to deliver the message you came to deliver if your right thigh is your message so be it if it's not and you have a goal and an objective to be successful make sure you're delivering the right message now you're all very nicely dressed today and you look you look good you look like you're here for the right message so that's really important George said I could take five extra minutes <laughs> right <Yes>. okay <laughs> so so watch that be conscious of that ladies Please don't do this. Please don't do this all the time. Please don't do this. Like it's a main. <laughs> Women do that all the time, and it drives men nuts. It drives bosses over the edge, and it makes you look like an idiot <laughs> because you're not conscious of doing it. Don't do things you're not conscious of doing. Don't have body language. Don't have movement. Don't distract from your message. We don't want people. We don't want people sitting down. I can't see one person in the room that's moving their body, and I'm really proud of you. Do you know how many conferences I go to where someone's leg is going up and down all the time, or a woman has her legs crossed and she's going to bounce her foot? <laughs> don't do that. You know what you're doing. Be in charge of yourself. Concentrate on your objective. That's really important. Don't take away from your message, whatever it is. Can we sit? Is it appropriate to sit with our legs crossed, or is it better to like? It's always yeah. better to cross to sit. <coughs> okay. It depends. Now, if I have a short skirt on, and it's going to hit here, mm -hmm. no, you you should not. First of all, you should have a skirt that's that hits you on the knee so you're comfortable. You don't want to have to sit down and start moving your clothing around. You see women do that too. And men, they'll get up and go, okay, I'm going to tuck this in. I'm gonna, you know, be comfortable with your clothing. And if you need to tuck something in or check something out, do it as you walk so you're not, everyone's not turned around looking at you. Does that help? Okay, but it's best not to. I, everywhere I've read, every, even today, I, th I was thinking it was going to change, so I checked on it. No, it's still better just to cross your ankles or keep your legs together. <clears throat> Any what, other question? Let's talk about face for a minute. Faces tell you, again, who we are. I don't have the happiest face in the world. I don't look like I'm going to burst into song in any minute. I don't, I mean, I'm probably not. But I need to have a relaxed face. I need to look like I'm intelligent and interesting. But I also need to leave it alone. We don't want to touch our face and then touch someone else, especially if we're going to eat with them. We don't touch our hair, our face, anything above here with our hands and then touch someone else or touch food. We don't clean our ears, we don't play with our glasses, we don't let put our glasses up here, we leave our glasses where they belong, and we're together. We're organized and calm. We can do a lot with ourselves, but we don't want to. Okay, any questions? Uh-huh. Uh, say your glasses are like sliding off. Like they're like, like way down. On your nose? Like slide down, like then you're going to have to, but you would do it. You wouldn't do a lot with them. You would just move them up a little bit because you don't want to make it like it's a hand over your face. Okay. For some reason, we have decided that technology requires our instant, immediate, and continuous attention and that we have to respond immediately making sometimes incredible decisions within seconds. What we're training ourselves to do is not pay attention to things that really matter. 
There are lots of things if I called you and said, you're going to be home for dinner at 5? Yes, you can say yes. Um, I'm writing my will. Would you like to be a major part of it or a minor part of it? You know? <laughs> so we have to give decisions we make the appropriate weight so we're not automatically living a knee-jerk technology life. We have to be in charge of our technology and we have to use it like an adult. This is what we have to own up to. Except that we're responsible for how much time we spend and how much energy we spend on our technology. Know that you have the power to choose when to engage. You're not in, it's not in charge of you. You're the adult among the two of you, and your technology takes second place. You decide when you have to use it. I don't decide that you have to use it now. You decide. If you're a consistent professional, and you always get back to me in a timely manner, I won't text you, I won't call you, and I won't call you on your cell phone. Have you, got, have you gotten those before? You've gotten someone called you on your on your home phone, someone called you on your cell phone, someone texted you. We don't do that. We don't, we don't create that much noise in someone's life. We're timely and we wait for people to respond to us when we're also kind to ourselves. If we are, we create a lot less stress in our lives. We set limits around technology. We turn off devices when we're with people. Technology never belongs between you and another human being. If you have a human being in front of you, you give them worth, time, and appreciate them. You would never pull out your technology and go, oh yeah, keep talking. Now what did you say? Okay, well yeah, I'd make that decision too. See, I've given you no worth at all, and I have made myself look less than professional. So make sure that you're not dealing with technology. It's not at the dinner table. It's not in a restaurant. It's not anywhere where there's someone else. And I know this is hard for you. I know it's hard for everybody. So try it. And you'll survive, I promise. Three more things before we go to questions and answers and a, and a brief um, plea from a professor friend of mine. Cover your mouth when you yawn. Never chew gum in public. Appreciate yourself and try what I'm talking about. If you do, your life will be so much less stressful. If you take control of it, you, you're graceful from in here to out here. I treat myself as well as I want to treat you. I want myself to feel as comfortable as I want you to feel. So be kind to us, be kind to yourself, be kind to other people, be accepting, be courageous, and set a standard for yourself. This is where I am today, this is where I want to be. Okay, now we're going to go to questions, serious questions. Um, you said no gum, what about mints? Depends on if you're a loud chewer. <clears throat> Just like with ice, you know, we don't chew ice in public either. Mints, I do Tic Tacs. I just don't ch chomp on them. <laughs> kind of let them melt in your mouth if you're not going to talk. The gentleman that was here before. Jeff. Jeff. Let's talk about one little thing about hand gestures. This is the fig leaf. If you read Utah Business Magazine, you'll see that they pose a lot of people, especially women, with the fig leaf pose, it's submissive, and you don't want to do it. You don't want to do this either, or this. This is like a command parade rest in the military. You don't want to do that. That's offensive, and it's, it's kind of aggressive. So you want, to be, you want to be out more and more relaxed. Okay, so watch all your gestures. And talk to each other about it. S give feedback. Because I don't know, unless you give me feedback for today, I have no idea if you had a good time, if you learned something, if I need to improve what you would like me to improve. I need feedback from you as much as you need it from each other. 
You all need to help each other be the best that we can be. And that's how we get there. Mm -hmm. If you're not at a table, yes. if you're in front of someone's desk, you would, I would pull your chair back so they can see you. I wouldn't be close on top of the desk. I would pull your chair back and then just re relax your hands. Okay. I wouldn't, you know, and I definitely wouldn't do this because they're looking for this. They, everybody's been warned, you know, watch for the person that, that folds their arms across their chest. But because it doesn't, it means people have given it more significance than it should have. So just don't do it. And then keep your feet flat on the floor and straight. Don't condense and roll back. Mirroring is good if you're, if you're with someone that you want something from. Like a boss. Like a boss. You mirror them. You don't do gestures, more gestures faster. Also, if you're with someone and you've lost their attention and they've rolled back, crossed their arms and crossed their legs, you've lost them. And what you need to do is change their body language. If you can, get them to stand up and walk with you to the other side of a room. That changes their whole body language and you can probably engage with them again. So we have to be astute people when we when we engage with people alrighty then <laughs> I, uh, I tend to be a very clumsy person in general by my best efforts and to that extent sometimes my first impressions can come off the board do you have some sort of recovery uh, plan <laughs> <clears throat> you have to explain clumsy um, I may I may at some times like a trip or, or appear foolish on first impressions um, or, or, and also it just like accidentally without any uh, intent, any malicious intent, I may, I may do something wrong with my hands as far as how I'm holding them. If, what, if, what is your like step back process if you, we notice that we're trying to make a first impression and we're doing something mm -hmm. wrong? First of all, be very aware. We all should be very aware of what we're doing and take control of it and ha make it a habit not to do something and but don't do it so that you're under pressure so you put yourself under a lot of pressure because you're meeting someone new you and also be relaxed about yourself and be able to laugh and say oh my gosh I can't believe I did that and then just walk right on don't spend more time explaining it than that oh my gosh I can't believe I did that you don't have to apologize you have nothing to apologize for just move move right on Eye contact is generally not boring. I'm not going to bore into your eyes, but you want to make sure you have, you're concentrating on that person and that you're relaxed enough so that they don't feel like you're, so you do the square, you're somewhere in here. And you just, you just want to make sure you're not treating them like you have another place to go where you're looking for a person that's more important than they are. So do you break it? That's you should break it. And also, I should have spent 60% of the time going through the audience and 80% of the time looking at one person that I'm, if I'm just talking to one person, that's 80% of the time. And then the rest should be working the room through you. More questions? Uh huh. Um, I would say as soon as you see that coming towards you to do it. I mean, it's nice to have you stand up now yeah. and then me walk towards you and both of us be, be eye to eye. You? Sure. Hi there. See, see? Our now see who that is? That's easy and comfortable. I have a friend that's a professor of psychology or sociology, excuse me, at the Y. And we sat down and I said, okay, I'm doing a lot of classes with young people. Can you help me give them some pointers about being a student? And she is a doctor. <clears throat> she's very, um, she's in control. She knows what she's doing. 
you'd get a kick out of her. So she wrote these down as helpful hints for you as students. Don't assume your laptop is a welcome guest in the room. Ask the teacher, let the teacher, the professor, the doctor lay down the guidelines for you. Turn your cell phone off if you have a timer on it, whatever. A ringer, you can hear your messages sent to you. If it makes any noise whatsoever, you're disruptive to other people, turn it off. Monday morning blues, repeatedly missing your Monday morning class is noticed a lot. Uh, your professor's name is not Jim or Jane. You give them the proper honorific and you respect who they are until they tell you, please call me, thus and such. There's no such thing as fashionably late. They're there on time, they expect their students to be on time. Choose your seat wisely. They look where you sit. And if you sit to the front, they know that you're there to learn. If you sit to the back, they know you're there maybe not to learn. So you want to, you want to take, get the most out of the class. Uh, avoid monopolizing your professor's time. Always ask them, do you have a minute tomorrow? May I make an appointment with you? Don't just go up after class and, and think that they're, they have the next 25 minutes to spend with you. They don't. Treat your TA with courtesy. Your professor has picked the TA. They're a team, they work together. They're there to help you and it, they expect you, your professor, and the TA expect you to respect them as you would the professor. Manage your education. Now, I'm gonna read this word for word. This is really important. Don't let your parents contact your teachers. Do your work or structure your educational career. The difference between a professional and a working class job is that professionals know how and do structure their life. Learn while you, are, while you are at school. Don't read newspapers or type on your phone. Take advantage to learn the needed skills to succeed in the world while you're at college. Learn them now, not on your first job. Understand that you are engaging with an institution. Learn to take charge of your education so the needed skills are in place when you meet the world, okay? Now, if, you want, if anybody wants copies of this information, I have it and I'm more than happy to send it to you. So just send me an email and I'll send it back out to you. Thank you very much. I enjoyed meeting you. It's fun working with this group. I appreciate it. Please call me if you have a question and have a great day and don't get really wet.